Hello, welcome to my fun stream today, where we're going to talk about um, the insane political excesses of uh, the Israeli right. And, you know, usually I try to be very nuanced. Usually I try to be very um, thoughtful with the critiques that I give of Israel. I understand that um, it, it's overstated today, but I do think that there are some people that take... Um, Israel, and they use it as an excuse to, they apply all the actions of Israel to every Jewish person in the world. Every Jewish person is responsible for the actions of Israel. Um, and because of that, you know, all Jews are complicit and all Jews are bad and whatever. Um, so I do try to be nuanced. I do try to be thoughtful. I do try to be um, considered of both sides. However, it's gotten to a point where nuance is not even necessary anymore. And what do I mean by that? Because that's kind of a loaded statement. Um, literally, I mean, it speaks for itself, bro. It speaks for itself. What are you supposed to say? What are you supposed to say when an elected official, a leader of your country, someone that people voted for and elected, comes out and says, oh, the only reason why we're not starving to death two million Gazans right now is because the world's not letting us. Oh, it's such a shame. Such a, such a tragedy how people are not letting us starve to death two million people. Boo-hoo. Wah, wah, I'm sad. And... Again, for me, I've tried to be sympathetic as much as possible. I've tried to understand the quote-unquote pro-Israel position. My family is very, very pro-Israel. My immediate Jewish community um, is very, very pro-Israel. But what, what can you say, bro? What, what kind of thing is that to say? I don't, I don't understand why you wouldn't criticize this statement. I don't understand why every single Jewish person that I know is not vociferously criticizing this moron for making this statement because there's no way that anyone in the world for any government can come out and say gee i wish the world would let us starve two million people to death and then people are going to support you um what 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 kind of logic is that bro if like if you cannot understand if you cannot understand that with the current political context, the current state of the world as it is, that an Israeli elected official coming out and making a public, this is not like a leaked recording. He publicly made, he thought this was something smart. He thought he was cooking with this one. He said that the only possible reason that they did not starve to death two million Gazans is because the world's not letting them. And so there's a few things that need clarifying here. There's a few things I need explaining as to like, it, it doesn't even make sense to a normal person why a politician would willfully make such a self-destructive, self-incriminating statement. It's a, there's, there's, you don't need a, a PhD in political science to understand that saying starving to death two million civilians is bad. Uh, what? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is that as far as Smotrich is concerned, and that as far as a lot of these people are concerned, concerned on the very very far right the crazy pro-rape people the very very crazy kahanas and the settlers i have a lot of exposure to this ideology growing up okay and i need people to understand that essentially when like when i was being brought up it's considered like a cool thing to say it's like so amazing between you and all your jewish buddies if you say oh we should kill all the arabs it's awesome they literally, like, I've had people say things like that. We should kill all the Arabs. It would be great. And they, they look, look around the room for a high five. Like, they just uh, delivered the fucking theory of a uh, formula for cold fusion. You know? It's, it's, it's guaranteed to make you more popular in Israel, no matter what. If you come out tomorrow, if I came out tomorrow, me as an anti-Israel, self-hating Jew, whatever the fuck label they want to put on me, if tomorrow I said kill the Arabs, I could be one of the most popular politicians in Israel. If a robot that was programmed to only repeat the phrase, kill the Arabs, ran for office in Israel, they would probably win a sizable portion of the vote. They might even win the election. So what I'm saying is that right now, the Israeli far right, the domestic audience in Israel is completely irrational. I mean, it doesn't really need to be restated, but like, I think it's important that people understand how divorced from reality they are and to understand like what particular alternate reality they're living in. So imagine from like 1990 to like 2022, basically, 
it's it's a guarantee there's no downside there's only a benefit to saying kill the arabs as an israeli politician kill the arabs kill the arabs and it gets so extreme it gets to a point where the domestic extreme far-right audience in israel they don't even care about issues anymore they have no concern about housing they have no concern about israeli poverty they have no concern about anything other than will you say kill the arabs and if you say kill, that is the only qualification you need to run for office and win for office in israel at this point are you personally sadistically cruel to Palestinians? Do you personally consider yourself to be superior to Palestinians and Arabs in every possible way? And if you answered yes to that question, great, I'll vote for you. And if you answer no to that question, I will not vote for you. That's it. That's literally it. There's no nuance. There's no anything else. And we need to stop being shocked as people when some Israeli official, some Israeli elected official comes out and says some insanely violent, sadistic, cruel, destructive, oh, we should uh, blow up the school, we should blow up the hospital, we should blow up the churches, we should blow up, blah, 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 blah. When Ithamar ben Gavir comes out and makes a speech tomorrow and he calls for killing Arabs and destroying Arabs and more war and more destruction and more chaos and more death, we shouldn't be shocked anymore because these people have no plan for anything in the world, there's no solution to any problem from any of these people that doesn't involve destruction and death and chaos. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry to all my pro-Israel friends, but the reality of the world, the reality of the crisis that BB and the loser government of the right has put us in needs to be said. I don't know that, like how biased, how deluded you've been, how much of the propaganda on the Kool-Aid you've, you've become, but when you bomb a new foreign enemy country every single day, you're going to have a response. There's going to be military responses. And it's going to escalate the tension to war. Bibi knows this, but he also knows that his loser, idiot, bootlicking supporters are stupid enough to get... If he tells them the sky is green tomorrow, they're going to say, yes, the sky is green. Yes, God, Bibi. Yes, King Bibi, whatever you say. They're dying! They're desperate! They would sell their own first son into slavery if it meant that they could excuse Bibi's failures on October 7th. They are bending over backwards to excuse BB for the security failures of October 7th. They cannot wait. They will be the first people in line to excuse him for security failures that resulted in 1,300 Jews being killed on his watch. Mr. Security. So why am I making this video? I'm making this video to tell you that the playbook that has benefited domestic Israeli politicians from pretty much 1990 till today, now it's reversed. From 1990 to 2022, it was literally basically Israeli politics competition of who could be crueler to Arabs. Who can say the worst thing about Arabs possibly is going to win the election. This one wants to starve 2 million. His opponent in the next election says, I want to starve 3 million. And then the and we should starve 4 million. And that's the debate issue. That's the very important political issue that needs to be discussed that Israeli uh, voters will need to go to the polls and discuss. And people are going to say, no, you're exaggerating. It's not fair. You hate Israel, whatever. Every single day, for eight months, I have had to see this one idiot a cabinet member say we should nuke Gaza. This moron today say we should starve to death two million people. Uh, Yoav Galant, whatever his fucking name is, saying we're dealing with human animals and we're not going to give them food, we're not going to give them water. It's every single day, multiple people a day, four months, saying we should kill two million people. We should nuke Gaza. We should eat the babies. We should rip their brains apart. Whatever fucking, the first violent thing that comes to their mind that relates to Palestinians, they will say it. And they'll say, oh, yeah, 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 he said kill the Arabs, 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 he's a good, he's, he's a good politician. How can he not have my interest in mind when he said kill the Arabs? I don't understand how a politician who says kill the Arabs cannot possibly be the best choice for the uh, given election in Israel. So it's very simple. The, 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 the script flipped. The script flipped, okay? There was a certain point, I'm going to say that it was the World Central Kitchen killings of the charity workers that flipped the script. Uh, you could also say that once a certain threshold of dead people uh, in Gaza was reached, that the world became more and more uh, unwilling to tolerate the excesses of the Israeli right. So again, I put it to you, the right-wing Jews of Israel. So it's a very simple question. 
Very, very simple question. One, in what universe does it benefit any Israeli elected official to come out and make a public statement today saying we're going to starve 2 million Gazans to death? That's one. Two, if it's not morally justified, why aren't you criticizing the statement? And three, do you really think that starving to death 2 million Gazans is going to be the thing that makes Israel safe for the long term? For these people, it's always one more dead Arab, one more bomb, one more war, one more killing, one more act of violence, one more division is the only thing in the world separating Israel and the people of the world, the Jewish people, from peace, from prosperity, from security, from safety. Of course, um, it's completely irrational. How many wars have we had? How many targeted killings have we had? How many uh, fucking prison camps have we had? And has it made Israel safer? Has the security wall? It's all a lie. None of it has made Israel safer in any sort. The only thing that has ever made Israel safer is reaching peace agreements with its neighbors. Israelis today, they're worried about Lebanon. They're worried about uh, Syria. They're worried about Iran. They're worried about many countries. They're not worried about Egypt, and they're not worried about Jordan. Why? Because we reached peace agreements with them. The ultimate thing that stopped Egypt and Jordan from waging li they waged literal wars against Israel that are much more threatening to the actual existence of the state of Israel than any Hamas attack. We have to be honest with ourselves. A state army of Egypt is more threatening to Israel than Hamas. That's simply a fact. We don't worry about Egypt invading Israel tomorrow because we signed a peace treaty with them. It's the only reason a fucking worthless piece of paper to you, whatever, is the only possible reason why we're not worried about Egypt attacking Israel right now. There's plenty of people in Egypt who would love to do that. I guarantee you. But all I'm saying is that literally, if you if you if if your political imagination is so limited that you cannot understand why an Israeli elected official coming out in the world today publicly, this isn't a leaked statement. This is him. He thinks it's a good thing to say for his political future. He thinks it's a great thing to say for the people of Israel. He's doing a great job. If you cannot understand today. Why an Israeli elected official publicly making a statement saying that the only reason we are not starving to death 2 million Gazans is because the world is not letting us is incredibly damaging to the state of Israel? Just remove yourself, remove yourself from politics completely. You have no right to speak about politics. And you know what the funny thing is? I'm sure that a lot of people on the right are like confused. They don't understand that people are mad at this. They're like, oh, that makes sense. That's logical. How can someone who supports the mass death of Arabs and Palestinians be bad? How can someone who's Israeli and Jewish be bad? How can someone who I voted for in the past be bad? How can someone who I supported be bad? I don't understand. So all I have to say is just wait, watch and wait as... I'll, I'll give you a very, very simple rule for the future of this, of this uh, country here of Israel. If Ben Gavir, Smotrich, and Bibi Netanyahu remain in power, then Israelis' lives will continue to get worse. Very, very simple rule. If 24 hours from now... We wake up and Ben Gavir, Bibi Netanyahu, and Bislazel Smotrich are still in power in Israel. 24 hours from now, Israelis' lives will get worse. I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just relaying the message. You pick these morons to lead you. You pick these losers who every single day stumble, fall, fail, shoot themselves in the foot, embarrass Israel on the national stage, impoverish the economy of Israel, remove alliances in the world, isolate Israel further. These are the losers that you voted for. So I don't know what has to happen, push come to shove, whatever. But at this point, if you're so on the right in Israel, so far on the right in Israel, that you cannot understand, you can't bring yourself to criticize this statement from Snowtrich, then you never, in my opinion, have the right to complain about, oh, they're saying it's a genocide, but it's not really a genocide ever again. You don't, you don't like, it bothers you, it hurts your feelings when people complain that Israel's doing a genocide in Gaza. So where are you on this? Where are you? I don't hear you today. I, I checked every single per Israel person. I know they're all dead. Inside. They're not one of them. There's not one of them who addressed this statement. Because anyone who addressed this, there's nothing you could say to defend it. Be my guest. I'm willing. Let me hear what your defense is. The beautiful, oh, Hamas did this and this. We need to stop too many people. No, it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out that way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We need reality. We need sobriety. We need normalcy. And we need the losers who destroy Israel every day like this to be gone, okay? You're not going to tell me I'm anti-Semitic, you're not going to tell me I hate Israel, this and that, when the reality is that the pro-Israel community and the loser politicians they elected have damaged Israel more. I, I never even imagined I would see Israel suffering to the extent that they have made it suffer in my lifetime. I never imagined I would see Israel so impoverished, so isolated, so hated, so scorned, so alone in the world, so afraid, so weak, 
as I as they are now today under the strong pro-Israel Arabian government of Bibi Netanyahu, Smotrich, and Ben Gavir. All they do, the only thing they do is make more emotions, do whatever they can to stoke chaos, stoke division, stoke demagoguery, stoke racism. Uh, the more chaos there is in the world, the more people are afraid, the more that they go to them. They have no, they have no plan. It's, it's crystal clear at this point, they have zero plan for Gaza for the future. Their only plan is to set things on fire. More war, more division, more chaos. So the loser idiots that are licking their boots will be even more doggedly loyal to them, like dogs on a leash. And then, like good little puppets, they're going to come out tomorrow and make a speech. Ah, oh, kill the Arabs, he said, kill the Arabs. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to vote for him in the next election. Yeah, 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 yeah. So as a Jew, I'm tired of voluntary L's being taken by these losers every single day. And I'm speaking out today to let the world know that these losers, these nothings in the world, Ben Gavir, Smotrich, Netanyahu, they have nothing to say for me as a Jewish person. I, I, it's like an alien. Even an alien, I would have more empathy and sympathy for than this loser here. And they only wish, my only hope is that he lives long enough to see the failures of what he's brought in this world for Israel. I only wish that he lives long enough to see his ideology do as much possible damage to Israel as it actually has, and he can realize that, and he can die a lonely, sad, broken man. Thanks for watching, people.